welcome back to my channel. I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid. So look who's finally in bloom after nearly three years of persistence. So I thought this was a very good opportunity to do a bit of a spotlight video on the Cyclopsis orchid. Now I'll preface by saying I have only the one Cyclopsis orchid. So this is Cyclopsis Mindenhall Hildos. It's an award-winning cross. It's been around for a few decades now, but most varieties of Cyclopsis have a very, very similar appearance to this bloom. They all have very large, long-lasting flowers, which bloom sequentially on each spike. So we'll just have a closer look at this flower and I'll put my hand back here but you can sort of get a sense for the size of this bloom. It is a really nice large bloom and you can see that the three sepals form these long thin antenna like structures. The petals form like these wings that go along the side and they've all got this beautiful big broad frilly lip with a yellow center. All Cyclopsis orchids seem to be a combination of yellow and orange, this browny sort of orange color, um, but they are alba varieties which are a mix of different shades of yellow. So a few facts about the Cyclopsis orchid. They used to be classed as Oncidiums, but eventually they separated out into their own genus and there's four species within that genus. So there's a very limited number of crosses. This Mendenhall is actually one of them and it's 75% Papilio and 25% Sandere. These guys are native to South and Central America and grow at fairly low altitudes of somewhere between 300 to 800 meters. So that gives a fairly good guide to their culture requirements um, which I'm going to discuss a little bit later. The Cyclopsis orchids are also sometimes known as the butterfly orchid because their very long spikes wave in the wind and the flowers kind of mimic butterflies as they flutter in the wind. So bees, which are the natural pollinators of these orchids, attack the flowers thinking that they're butterflies competing for their food source and they end up pollinating them in the process. Even like the name of the species Cyclopsis papilio, I think um, papilio is like a Latin origin for butterfly kind of like you know the French word for butterfly is papillon these guys are epiphytic orchids and on first glance they do look very similar to the oncidiums but they do have some unique traits and upon closer inspection these become a lot more obvious so you can see that the pseudobulbs are quite round and flat and then they end with this single apical leaf and once you feel the texture of these leaves you'll never forget it they feel very leathery almost like cardboard and they're really quite stiff so you can sort of imagine how much space they end up taking as they grow the leaves grow in all different directions and because the leaves are so stiff and not very pliable they do take up a lot of space so this foliage is just absolutely stunning it's got these reddish maroon sort of splotches and a green background and this is a trait of the Cyclopsis papilio so that's handed down to this Mendenhall variety but other species tend to just be a plain green. I think this is probably one of my favorite mottling patterns though and I think this plant is worth every inch of space it takes up. So because I have only had one type of Cyclopsis orchid and this is actually my very first flower on my first spike, the care information I can give you is a little bit limited. But I have had this orchid for nearly three years and I've been waiting for this spike a really long time. So firstly, when she came in flower, I couldn't really resist but to give you a spotlight. But secondly, I guess the information I'm going to give you will be a little bit of a collation of the information I found online, but also what I found works for me. What I can say is that this is not a difficult or fussy orchid to keep whatsoever. I find it quite similar in care requirements to Oncidiums and I think it will grow very well alongside the warmer growing Oncidiums in your collection. So in terms of light, this guy likes bright shade. Mine didn't tolerate the direct sun very well. As you can see, I've got a little bit of burn in that corner and that was when the humidity was quite low and it was a very hot day admittedly, but it was still early morning. But I'm sure with a little bit of acclimatization, you could get it into some brighter light if you wanted. But I find it generally doesn't need a huge amount of light. However, my blooming did coincide with um, a couple of changes, but in particular, I moved it out onto my balcony grow space and it did get 
some very early morning direct light so that was one change and that coincided with the blooming uh, but there were other factors that might have played a part I think it'll grow very well for you in foul light but my feeling is that it requires slightly brighter light kind of like the Oncidiums to spike and bloom in terms of temperature, although this plant doesn't tolerate really strong direct sun very well, it absolutely loves the warmth and I think it grows best in the summer months. That's really obvious to me and I would keep this plant above at least 16 degrees Celsius in the winter months. So I winter mine indoors. It's a low altitude plant so it's definitely a warm grower. So in terms of water, in my opinion this orchid absolutely loves moisture. Most sources say that it should be watered as it approaches dryness. My summers here are very hot so my plant does very well in summer kept evenly moist kind of like my Mordier Paphiopetalums but in winter I do tend to let it dry out a little bit more and water as it approaches dryness. So last spring, my plant started working on two new growths, but I accidentally let it go bone dry for a few days and it actually opted to abort those growths. Um, this is in context of being freshly repotted and then also starting to work on a new flower spike. But I think it goes to show how important hydration is to this orchid, especially in the hotter months. And then on the topic of repotting as well, I found that my Cycopsis responded very, very well to repotting. So it was in the same pot for two years and as soon as I repotted it into some fresh media it started growing new roots straight away it started growing a new flower spike and two new growths so you can see here how moist I keep this medium but it is a mixture of about 50 50 sphagnum to a small bark mix um, the usual premix that I use has bark charcoal and perlite in it but this is after three months and these are all fresh roots here so you can see how much it's enjoyed the repotting so before I go, by far the most interesting thing about the Cycopsis orchid has to be the nature of its blooming and its spike. So each spike can last years and years. Um, I've seen some sources that say 8 to 12 years each spike can last and it's a sequential bloomer so as soon as this bloom fades it'll start growing the next flower and you can sort of see where it where it's going to come from there. So you can imagine after years and years how long this spike will get. So on its first flower it's already about a foot and a half long. I do believe that these guys can be in bloom year round. I'm not sure in cooler climates um, whether they take a little bit of a rest from blooming. However, they do continually grow. You can see I've got a new little growth developing there and I will put up a picture of a new spike developing and you can see that this new growth is broader at the base and sort of grows out towards the side whereas the new spikes tend to have a bit more of a rounded tip and grow a bit more vertically. The spike itself took about three months to develop before it actually flowered. I'm not too sure how long these flowers last. This one has been open for just over three weeks now um, and it's still going quite strong. So yeah, I will probably just update the description below and let you know how long this bloom does end up lasting and how long it is between each bloom. So everyone, in summary, I believe that the Cycopsis orchid is an excellent beginner orchid. There's just a few essential things that you have to remember. So bright shade, about oncidium level light, keep her well hydrated, especially in summer, good airflow, good warmth, and never cut the flower spike and you're good to go. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this little spotlight video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more orchid videos. Hope you guys have a fantastic week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye.